Are robots the cheapest way to milk cows? No. no. You are now watching Farming with Duffy Ag. I'm driving along to work here and just thinking about some of the comments I see as far as the questions, robot questions is the big thing in the last few videos um, between the school and what I actually do. And there's one comment, um, and I'm not picking on comments, it just brings up interaction here. So the one comment was uh, talking about how that would open up time and utilization to be able to do crop works and then somebody answered back with well each robot costs half a million dollars and by the time you build a robot the barn you're at two million dollars for two robots no robots never costed half a million dollars at least not in the states um when we first started looking at robots they were a quarter to 300 um that's u.s dollars so yeah, they were way... <sighs> Deal of Valve, when robots first came to the States, priced themselves in a bad place. Um, in my opinions, in my opinion, as far as what they should have done, was pretty much give the robots away at cost and get themselves in the market. But it probably would have put them into worse places because at that time there wasn't dealerships that could handle large dairies of robots, things like that. Um, it takes a different dealership, different management to manage a thousand cows on robots or 500 cows on robots. So, but now 150 to 180,000 a robot. Um, a lot of our farms purchase them on a seven year loan and a lot of them will pay that loan off ahead of time. So it depends how much labor, how much outside labor you have at that time. If you're the only person, so look, if you're one row, if you're milking 60 cows, robot does roughly 60 cows. Um, yes, in places like New Zealand, I saw 120, 130 cows, but they're grazing and they're milking them one and a half times a day because of that. So it's a different, different economics, different structure. But U.S. Mark, one robot, 60 cows. Yes, you can milk 70 cows, blah, blah, blah. But we'll go with the 60 cows. So one person, let's say he's milking 60 cows in a tie stall barn. And he does all the milking, all the feeding. So to justify the robot, it's hard to say, hey, I'm going to save on labor at that point. Because you are you don't associate your dollar figure ever in on labor. You should, but as farmers, we say... Well, I'm doing it so it doesn't cost me anything. It's probably the most expensive cost is having you do minimal skill labor for yourself because you could be focusing on other things such as running the business, growing the business, managing, um, excelling. So that's very challenging and a lot of people say, well, how do you pay for robots at that point? The facilities that are hiring in labor and keep in mind, $15 milking, stuff like that, plus housing, um, at minimum wage, a lot of places are going to um, overtime after 40 hours, even on dairy stuff, even on farms, I mean. So that makes it much more appealing and it makes sense on paper. So the person who's milking by themselves at that point, it's a lifestyle or it's to open up uh, access to do better at crop works, to be able to manage better or to grow. Since one person can, when we went from one robot to two robots, the time you spend in the day and with the cows and stuff really didn't change. Um, another hour a day you spend on managing stuff, but it, you become very efficient. So like if I... I don't see myself wanting to milk 
500 cows, 1,000 cows, 1,500 cows. It just doesn't appeal to me. But I'm pretty confident I can milk 1,500 cows with me and like two other people. That includes all chores in the barn, feeding cows, everything. But you got to set yourself up for that. So the efficiency and the number of cows that you can milk per person drastically changes. And that's where larger dairies have figured out you can put robots in, have a few really, really talented managers, and milk a lot of cows in an efficient manner. And have cows last longer because the robot's less stressed, you're not pushing cows. Um, yeah, it's just a better lifestyle for the cows. So true cow people, when they see robot barns, and they're quiet and they're calm, it makes all the difference in the world to the cows. And they, pe true cow people see that and they say, this is the way cows should be. So, I know people are going to complain, oh, cows should be out on pasture, this and that. In the U.S., cows on pasture, it's a fairy tale. We do not have the grass like in Ireland, New Zealand. Um, we don't have the climate for it. Yes, down south you have it, but then you get the heat waves. So, it's great to see cows on pasture, but it's not... It's not realistic. Most new, most northeast farms physically can't do it because of how much is spread out. Unless you're going to move cows a ton. Um, it's just, yeah, we don't have the, we have the ups and downs of the weather. So, but where was I going with this? So, yeah, if you want to milk a lot of cows um, with minimal people, robots make a lot of sense. And they do justify and pay back a lot quicker on a larger scale because your utilization of the labor that you're replacing with robots. So my facilities that I work with, that replaced three milkers. You start doing the math out. Okay, the cost of having somebody milk your cows, if you're giving labor, 60,000 a year, maybe, maybe more. Never mind the headaches of dealing with labor. Um, the unknowns, like, hey, we're leaving, you have to milk cows now. Goodbye. Because that does happen quite a bit to farms that, hey, the person left in the middle of the night, now you're you're the one milking cows because you don't have anybody to replace. So, if you have three people, three laborers, and they're at 60,000, somebody's gonna say, oh, they don't make 60,000. Start doing the math back as far as everything that you invest into a, into a milker or into somebody that works on a facility. Um, it's not cheap. It, it is not cheap at all. So, never mind insurance, workman comp, any of that stuff. So, you start doing that up. $180,000 a year, you're paying three milkers to milk, let's say 300 cows. So, if you replace that with a robot that costs $180,000 a robot, so you put six robots in, six years just based off that labor never mind the other things I was saying never mind if you're going from 2x to 3x if you get if you get the 10 15 percent milk increase kind of a no-brainer at that point um, yes if you're in a facility that you need to build a new facility it's an added cost um, but if you're in a facility that you need a new facility anyways are you gonna build one and build a parlor so it depends where your situation is at that time. Um, if you just built a brand new parlor, brand new facilities, I'm not going to swing it in and saying, hey, let's go uh, rip that parlor out and put robots and do this and that. That doesn't, that doesn't justify on that side of it. But yeah. I'm a big fan of robots, not only because we have them at home, but because I see how much benefit it can go with it. But... There's a lot of hand-holding, a lot of support at the beginning so that you get going in the right form. Um, it's not, here's a robot, we'll see you when we gotta do maintenance. Somebody did ask about maintenance, things like that. So every four months there's maintenance kits on robots. Um, and then, yeah, I get some service calls in between it, like the camera cable um, that failed, but that camera cable have been in for quite a while. That's something, hey, it failed, we change them out. Nothing too crazy, so normal service calls. Uh, so robots as far as running cost a year with chemical everything 
nine to fourteen thousand probably, depending on if you're betting with sand, your wear parts, stuff like that. I have heard farms that are like twenty thousand a year. Um, it usually goes back to the farm is having the dealership do everything, or they have aggressive wear sand. Um, sand is great for cows. Horrible for equipment in any aspect, manure, milking equipment. But it is great for cows. So. Are robots the cheapest way to milk cows? No. no. But milking cows, pipeline or dumping station, probably the cheapest. Your body's gonna show the wear and tear after 20, 30 years. And I have quite a few friends that built tie stall barns. And they love their cows and it's the interaction side of it. But damn, does, you're beat up. So we were in a tie stall milking 3X I had no interest in milking cows when I went to college. Um, robot came in freshman year, and that opened up to, hey, this isn't a lifestyle that you have to be 100% tied to a schedule. That's the big thing. Nobody tied to a schedule and everything else like that. 11 o'clock to 1 in the morning milking cows every day. Yeah, that gets old pretty quick, especially when you're... 20 years old and you'd like to have some sort of a social life granted I don't I got a social life with you guys but my social life is minimal because hustling for a dream we'll see what goes on uh, yeah so there's a rundown as far as robot side of it what it actually costs the mindset there's a lot to think about and yes it's a big chunk of change up front um, I think farm credit was against it for a period there and since some of these progressive dairies have jumped on board and run with robots, they've realized, hey, these work and they're profitable. Um, it's, yeah, we're, we're going on 11 years with our old robots, so clearly the life expectancy is there. And I wanna be the oldest robot in the US. That's really what I wanna be. There's a few ahead of us. In Wisconsin, I think one in Pennsylvania. So a lot have updated to the V300s and somebody did make a comment that they had the V300s. The V300, it's it's a game changer as far as the platform. I give the engineers a lot of credit. They, uh, they took away some stuff that I really enjoyed as far as technician side of it and user friendliness and they added it into the computer. Now that we know more about, hey, how, how to get through the app, it's okay, but it's not as, hey, go, the drop down tab I can't mess around as much on the robot a lot of it was for security because they're building these large robot dairies that are 60 robots 80 robots 100 robot facilities and they don't want just anybody walking on messing with something and then leaving because it you have less less awareness of the employees or people around at that point so a lot of it's for that side of it and yeah 100 robots, 6,000 cows. That's a reality now with it. Um, at the time when I was in New Zealand, we were milking 1,500 with 24 um, deal of valves, and he was milking another 1,500 with 24 Lailies between two sites. So, large dairies, it's where it's at, and Cali and Chile. Um, that was 64 robots. So, pretty wild but that's where it's going california texas arizona new mexico those those big big players in the dairy industry that are on a different level but it's the dealerships have grown to be on that level too so it that's the success of robots a dealership with an open mind and a lot of care for them the uh succeeding at robots and a farmer that goes in with an open mind um, and the help. So I've been on dairies where the help doesn't believe in robots and it's it shows. They don't run right, they're unhappy with stuff and it's not the robot's fault, it's not the cow's fault, it's the help didn't believe in it. So you gotta believe in what you are and I've we have dairies now that three years ago, robots, they said, oh, that's not for us. They had to make it work in their mind 
before they said, hey, we should do this. So, and I understand that. But the high school here, this has been an ongoing project for five years. Um, a lot of people ask, do they sell their own milk there, blah, blah, blah. No, they're part of Agrimark, so Cabot Cheese. Um, I th think they probably go into Franklin the same as us or whatnot. So, Tom Aquak picks them up, not Dave, another milk truck driver. But, uh, yeah, there is some dairy da left down here in this area, and it's great that the school invested in a robot. Everybody said, oh, that's so expensive. They built a whole new campus. It's not like they built a robot barn. Honestly, in the robot barn, we're probably the cheapest thing in the barn. So between the robot, the milking equipment, you gotta think, they built, when you build a facility for a school, everything is up to code. The sprinkler systems, the alarms, the doors, the locks, everything. So you can eat up quite a lot of money. The engineers, the pumps that pump things, the bathrooms. So the robot actually wasn't the most expensive cost of the facility. Um, but yes, so we have University of Connecticut with two robots. We have Bristol County Ag with one robot. And we do have another high school that we work with, uh, Alvern, Alverni, Alvern. I, I always forget how to pronounce it right. And uh, I guess it would be Nashua, or on the outskirts of Nashua, New Hampshire. So there is still some Ag high schools that float around. Um, and it's good because at some point, we're gonna totally disconnect any of the next generations from farming it's just going that way so that these schools are keeping it connected um and the kids love it like i said i had a lot of friends that went to bristol county ag and then went on to Cobleskill, and they they love the campus they love the education it opened their eyes up to different things and set them in a good place for the future so but yeah always something always learning robots i got lucky that i got put in that surrounded by robots at the time i did and i learned a lot and it's created where i am today uh it's it's a hell of a job i i really do enjoy it you guys you guys are sitting on a wrench in my cup holder so we're driving almost to the high school but we got a meeting with the nutritionist and then I'm going to get right into my day. We got to get ready for second cutting. We're late on the first stuff, but it's that stuff was a little slow to go to get going. So I figure next week we're going to roll into that. But we got to get the chopper done. Got quite a bit of the shop, the hoop building cleaned up. Getting ourselves to a better place. So I figured I would let you guys in on some of this. And ramble along and explain what goes on with the robot side because there is a lot of people that watch the channel that either dairy farm well dairy farm or dairy farmed in the past and uh, robots fascinate a lot of people because robots only milk a small small little portion of the cows in the world right now Europe's way ahead of us as far as the cow numbers and same with Canada but the US it's crazy when well Anko knows we're already here um, it's crazy that you get some of these large dairies and they're like, yeah, let's go milk 5,000 cows with robots. Like, that's a big skew. You don't have that other places in the world. Um, well. Alrighty. I'll stop rambling along. Appreciate you guys watching. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good one.